a new series. Am I loud out there? No, we're good? Okay. Um, we're starting this new series called Retro. Uh, and this whole series deals with a flashback. Not, not the drug type of flashback when you like have some weird drugs that you're going on. It's the flashback of our spiritual journey. It's a journey that we've been through and where we are today. But many times we almost put the past to the side about all the lessons that we've learned in the past. And we forget about what God has done. So we are going to take where our church is, what, seven months old? Our core values from service to relevant to transformation to family and authentic community. And for the next five weeks, we are going to be talking about those things and how they mean a lot to us as a church. But if you and I would focus on flashing back to our family, our community, our service and our relevance and what relevance is and transformation it's going to be fun. But when I think of retro, these are a couple of pictures that come to my mind. I'm going to throw them up there. I think about the afro. I think about the peace signs. I think about the huge glasses that basically all the ladies in America are wearing again. Um, and, and it's interesting. But I think it's interesting that, that trends change so much, don't they? And now today... The style and the, the, the fashion of 10, 15 years ago is what? It's coming back. And you're, we're looking at it like, oh, now we're wearing all plaid and everything. Somebody walks in with a tie-dye shirt and says, now that's in style. I'm like, I forgot my laundry. I do my laundry and I'm just wearing it. But it becomes style. When it comes to retro, what are some things? You guys are not awake. Smile for me, for me. All right, good, good. Okay. What are some things that you think of when you think of retro? When you maybe it's maybe it's nineteen seventies or whatever. What are some things that you think of when you think of retro? Anybody? Vinyl records. Was that? Vinyl records. Vinyl records. Oh, I should put that up. That's good. Anything else? A track. Bell bottoms. Real radio. Was that? Bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. Does anybody have bell bottoms still? Okay, I wear a size 38, 32. If you have some, I'm going to wear them next week. All right? So hook me up. All right, anybody from over here? What's that? Atari. What's that? Atari, yes. What else? Drive-ins. Dad's Afro? Yeah. When did he have Drive-ins. Drive-ins. I don't know about that. All right? All right? Drive-in. What's that? Leg warmers. Good. What's that? Drive-ins. Drive-ins. Drive-ins? Drive-ins? Drive-in movie theater. That's a scary place to be in drive-in. Okay. What else? Dad's more. What's that? Muscle cars. Muscle cars. So ever said that? Absolutely. Anything else? Jelly Jeep. shoes. Jelly shoes. <laughs> and now they're like in the insoles. They all have to. Okay. We we can think of all that stuff, but it's interesting that we can remember that, even if it's ten years ago or when we can remember how things change. But we like to flash back. I have a CD that I made, and it's a. I'm, I'm kind of young. I'm thirty. How, how old am I? I'm 30, 34. Okay, I'm 34 years old. I lost count after 30. About 34 years old, but I absolutely love 90s music. Anybody with me? Yeah. Oh, great. Other one of you guys are like, 90s music? That's all fresh and nice. I'm like, 60s. If that's you? Yeah, interesting. All right. But I like 90s music. I put it in my car and I'm just I'm just listening to it. I'm, I'm having Chumbawamba uh, fills. It's just, it, it's just great. All that to say is we can flash back. But in our spiritual life, I think it's necessary for us to flash back in our lives. Because we need to flash back and see where God has taken us and where we are today. Amen. And if we don't consider where we are, we are not going to consider where God has taken us and where He's going to take us to the next step. Got that? All right. So we, we came up with, with the word transformation. The word transformation can sound very new agey and everything, but, but I think it's a crucial word. So we went out with our credit team, and we wanted to find out what Evansville thought about the word transformation. So I'm going to watch this for a second. At Catalyst Church, transformation is one of our core values. Now it's time for us to find out what Evansville thinks about transformation. Transformation is a change. There's different types of transformation. Um, just depends on, you know, what subject you're talking about. Uh, taking to 
a different state than previously before, I guess. Like, going from one thing to another. Coming from one thing to another. Changing into something else. Uh, transformation, uh, I guess the ultimate example to me was someone that does not have the Christian faith, does not believe in God, and then he is uh, saved and accepts Jesus Christ as his Savior. A want or a need to change, I think, causes transformation. God. Uh, there's got to be some sort of catalyst involved, something that makes the change possible and then maybe a medium to go throughout. Death or spiritual. A catalyst, something to cause change. Wanting to be something different. So some person may have a, a tragedy in their life, they lose a loved one or something. Uh, maybe uh, they've uh, struggled in life and uh, a friend uh, that is involved in the church uh, has been talking to them and gets them to, to come to uh, uh, the church and, and experience the, the worship of Jesus Christ. And uh, usually when that happens, uh, it just kind of happens. Um, a transformed life looks, I just think, um, You'd have to know the person's life before the transformation because it would look different. It would look, hopefully, better. Happiness with blue skies and lots of children. Sounds good to me. Finished product, I guess. Huh. <laughs> Some people it could be good. I don't know what else to say on that one. <laughs> Something outward and perhaps inwardly different. You know, I really don't know what transformation means. That last guy might be many of you guys. Like, what is transformation? I've heard the word. You come into this different type of church, and you, you felt welcome coming in, and you've seen people's lives being transformed, and you're like, I don't know your past, but man, there's something different about you. If you walked in here and you're not a churchy person, if you're not a a believer in Jesus Christ. I want to tell you for the next two minutes or three minutes what transformation really truly is. You can transform your car, you can watch the movie Transformers, but the real transformation happens right here. God created you and I. From the beginning of time, He loved each and every one of us so much. John 3.16 says, For God so what? Love. God so loved the world and all its junk and all its stupidity and everything that goes along with it, He loves us. John 3.16 again says, For God so loved the world that He what? Gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Many of you guys have heard this illustration, and I think it's very key to transformation is this. God and us are separated with a wall we call what? Sin. There's a wall. Imagine there's a wall right here. It is so tall, it is so wide, it's so deep, it's so wide, that you are not able to drill through it, climb over it, dig through it, go around it. It is so thick and big, and that is sin. No matter if you're a white light teller or if you if you have done if you've murdered somebody, then you still have a wall of sin. That verse talks about how we are on one side and the wall of sin separates us from God's love. But he loves us unconditionally. And he's like, you on that side, you sinner, you need to come over to this side. But there's a problem. I am God, I am holy, as the that song that we just sang. He is holy. He is holy. He cannot even look on sin. So God so loved the world, even though we are still sinners, God so loved the world that He gave His Son, Jesus. And you saw the video on how Jesus is this. Jesus is our King. Jesus is this, 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 and this. And He is. So God sent Jesus to this earth to die for you so you can have a transformed life. And the way it looks is as this. you got Jesus. On the top of that wall, reaching down and saying, you know what, you sinner, I've lived in your shoes. Not as a sinner, but I've lived in your shoes and I see the temptation that you're going through. 
Take my hand because I have died for your sins. I have sacrificed myself for you so that your sins can be forgiven. All Jesus, all God wants to do is on this side of the wall is to look up to Jesus and grab His hand and ask for forgiveness. And you might not understand it. You're like, how is that going to change my life? But it does. There is a catalyst. And people ask me, what does catalyst mean? Are you like a cult? Or what, what are you guys? And I said, it's simply this. A reaction for a change. When we sinners come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, there has to be a change. A transformation happens that is unlike any powerful nuclear weapon imaginable. Because it happens from the inside. And it will radically change your life. So transformation happens this way. By believing that you're a sinner and believing that Jesus Christ came and died for us and believe that all we have to do is put our faith and our trust and grab His hand and He will help us to the other side. And now the transformation happens as follows. The God who loves us so much doesn't see us as a sinner anymore, but God who loves us sees us through the perfectness and the forgiveness of Jesus. The transformation happens because of Jesus. He says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him, except through the Son. So, transformation. At the very end of this message, I'm going to, I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive this. And, but before we do that, I'm going to go through um, an avenue of talking about the other side of transformation. The side that those of you who do have a relationship with Jesus Christ, what your life should look like. And it's simply found in one verse. If you have, if you have your... Actually, let me do this first. What does a transformed life look like? It looks like this. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It looks like this. What does the Bible say about transformation? So we go into what it looks like. Go throw that up, Terry. In 2 Corinthians 5 or 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in other words, you have the hand of Christ, you are have a relationship with Him, and God sees you, the sinner, through God, through, through the blood of Jesus Christ. It says, Therefore, if anybody is in Christ, He is a new what? Creation. Creation. You're like, well, you know what? I received Jesus, and I'm... You know what? I didn't grow like six toes. I, I didn't like have a second nose or a smaller nose. That would be nice. But a smaller nose or smaller ears or whatever. How am I a new creation? The creation, the new creation starts from the inside. And we're going to talk about that. The old you is what? The new has come. That's what true transformation looks like. All right. I've had the opportunity to... to to experience a lot of your transformation, and it's been awesome. I've been in the ministry about 11 years, and I, I was a youth pastor beforehand, and I remember many, 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 many stories about how I had the opportunity to share Jesus with others, and they reached up and grabbed Jesus' hand. And I remember I was at a, a youth summer camp, and this senior, very intellectual, smarter than I could ever be, because I'm like not smart at all. So he comes up to me, and he's like, Dave, you know what? I've heard you talk about Jesus, and, and, and you know what? What do I do to accept Jesus into my heart? The real church of What do I do to accept him into my heart? How do, how do, I, how do I do this? And I sat him down, and I simply said, Hey, do you admit that you're a sinner? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? Do you want to strive to live your life every day to, to please God, love the Lord of God with your heart? So am I went through all this. And he's like, he looked at me, and he said, yes. As soon as he said yes, he did not have to say a prayer. As soon as he said yes and truly meant it, he was, church word, saved. He became a new creation. And I could tell it because he started to bawl. Snot running down his nose, literally. Snot running down his nose. And he's crying. He's sitting on this bench. And went, did you get hurt? Well, what happened? I mean, it's like I knew what happened, but it's like... Wow, that's awesome. And, and he, I, I ran and got a tissue or I had somebody get a tissue and he's like, give me three or four tissues. There's snot everywhere. It, it's, just, it's awesome. And he got up, gave me a hug, and there was just something about him that changed because he has been, what? Transformed. 
I remember another guy in my previous church, and his name was Ben. He was walking along, and he just decided to come in because he was about to get a divorce. He, he had like four or five affairs. He was a drunk, and, and just a list went on. His name was Ben. He walked into the pastor's office. I didn't have an opportunity to share Christ with him, but I, 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 I was there, and I heard the story. He sat down at the, at the, at the desk, and he, he heard the gospel, and, and he prayed, and he, he realized his countenance changed and all that stuff. He had a beer in, in a cooler that he had carried in. And he said, I'm about to vomit. And we're like, not in the pastor's office. It's got like all the crown jewels and everything. What, what are you doing? And he's like, for some reason, this beer that is inside this cooler is making me sick. From then on, his marriage got better, and, and he had a child, and he was not allowed to have a child, or couldn't have a child, and he was not a drunk anymore. He loves his wife. Transformation happens, and it happens in different ways with people. All right? Um, and then people here at Catalyst Church, if you saw the countdown, you guys have changed, because of not they, but you have said, no, it's Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And I, I, I remember, I'll pick on Donnie, and Donnie's not here, so that's a good thing. I was sitting down in, in, his, in his truck, and you were still back at the hotel. He, he, he heard about Jesus and so on and so forth. He sat in the truck, and I shared the gospel again with him. And all of a sudden, he lifted up his head, and no joke, he smiled. If you know Donnie, Donnie's not, well, if you knew Donnie before, Donnie's like, how to thing, all right? But now, Donnie... You can't shut that boy up about Jesus. Transformation happened, and it's happened in your life too. That is transformation. So what does it actually look like? Turn to Mark chapter 12. How does transformation, if you want to say, what is one key verse about transformation? I would say this is it. Um, Mark chapter 12, we'll start at verse 28. By the way, if there is a Bible there next to you, it is your Bible to keep. If you do not have one, that yellow Bible is your Bible, Take it with you. It's yours to keep. Our gift to you. It's your Bible. All right. Um, Mark chapter 12 and verse 28. Um, basically, this one, Jesus was here on earth. He, he debated with all these religious rulers and so on. Um, and it says this. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. In other words, Jesus debating with all these religious people about the kingdom of heaven. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He said to them, of all these commandments, which is the most important? Let's pause there for a second. What it's saying there is, they had about 600 laws, literal laws, that you cannot wash your clothes in this way, you have to eat this type of food, and you have to do all this stuff. And if you obey all these things, you are worthy enough to go to heaven. And Jesus is, the, the, the guy said, okay, out of all these 600... What am I supposed to do? In other words, we could say out of everything we're supposed to do in our Christian faith. Okay? As a Christ follower. And I'm talking to you guys as Christ followers now. From here on out, I'm talking to you as Christ followers. So listen closely. Alright? What your life is supposed to look like. What is the most important thing in your life above all else? Okay? It says this in verse 30. Love the Lord. What God your God. It's your God. It's my God. It's our God. Love the Lord, your God, with all your what? Heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then it says the second is love your neighbor as yourself. And we'll talk about that one later on. But it says, love the Lord your God with all your what? Heart. Okay, we're going to talk about what that looks like. With all your what? Mind. With all your soul and with all your strength. And we're going to talk about those four things very briefly on what that looks like. But before we do that, let's look at the heart. Watch this. My name is Wade Law. And I was all about power, territory, and money. I would have done anything to protect it. And I found a few good things out in my life that I've had given, someone gave to me didn't cost me a dime. And I found Jesus. He has transformed me into who I am. I don't know my crew. 
and I don't need my colors. I don't need my shield. And the only weapon that I need is Jesus Christ himself. And the Bible is the strongest sword you can find. I don't need any of it. The best thing I ever had was Jesus in my heart. I have been transformed. That is one of our very own Catalyst people, Wade. That his life was transformed. His what was transformed? Heart. Heart. Okay. And I want to pause and say this. In the next few minutes, I'm going to be very, very, like, bold with you guys. Because what happens sometimes, we come into church, put on our Christian face, then we go out and our heart and mind, our strength is so much different than in here. So listen closely to me. Your heart, as Wade's heart and other people's hearts, change or transform is because of this. If you truly, Christ followers, if you truly have a new heart, okay? Not a heart from before, a new heart. You will actually care for others a whole lot more. Your heart will be so tender to, to people hurting. Your heart will be so focused on God. And God's heart are for the poor, the widows, and the orphans. It says that's where God's heart is. And His heart is so much for children. His heart is so much for for all people to come to know Him. And we and our heart is so focused on us. What does my heart want today? Oh, you hurt my feelings today. My heart is hurt. Suck it up. Shut up. You have a relationship with Christ, so your heart should not be hurt because God's got your heart. Don't give your heart away to your best friends. Don't give your heart away to your children, to your spouse. Give your heart to God, and then He'll distribute the right type of heart. Hear me clearly, Christ followers. If you truly have a relationship with Christ, you are not the same. Your heart will beat for God, not for yourself anymore. Listen to this verse. It's in Ezekiel 36 Verse 26, it says, I, talk about God, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you the heart of what? Flesh. Flesh. Some of you in this room say that you're a Christ follower, but you still have a heart of stone because you are truly not a Christ follower. You say that you might have a relationship, but you probably have religion. Your heart is as hard as stone. I know that's a bold statement to make, but research says that about 70% of those in a congregation are truly not Christ followers. They've got a mask on. So I cannot see your heart. I can't just rip open your, your body and say, oh, there's stone there. Oh, it's flesh is beating. I don't know, but God knows. And that's why transformation happens from the inside out. And notice in that verse it says, I will give you a heart, a new heart, and a what? New what? Spirit. Spirit. When you receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior, when He is actually transformed your life, you receive the Holy Spirit of God. And you're like, whoa, that's like a little like Pentecostal. Woohoo! I have Holy Spirit in this. Here's the deal. You will receive a counselor. You will receive God that will direct your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And it will start from the inside out. Check this verse out. And the fruit of the Spirit, all right, the fruit of you receiving a new heart and a new spirit is this. If you say, I don't know if I have a heart of um, a stone heart or if I have a heart of God. If you have a heart of God, you will work on the following things. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and uh, self-control. Against such things there is no law. We talked about the law, how it's no more. So let me ask you this. Do you have, and this is a rhetorical question, don't say yes or no, do you have, are you working on those things? If you are, your heart might be beating freshly because the Holy Spirit of God is directing your heart. If you're like, I don't care about all that stuff, and, and really, I, I just come and I'm patient here, but not out there. 
I don't know your heart, but your heart could be stone. You're like, okay, okay, okay. So what's next? All right, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, what's next one? No, what's the next one? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Hopefully it's not your Bible's open. Soul. With all your soul. All right? Now, your soul is you. And you're like, okay, explain. Okay. Our body, our fleshly body, as you know, when it dies, our fleshly body, we get buried and it rots away and it decays and smells a lot. But our soul is what's eternal. And what happens many times in, in our relationship with God, we're toiling with, with the devil. But because before our relationship with God started, our soul belonged to who? The devil. Who said the devil? All right. Our soul belonged to the devil. Because our soul is the, the eternal part of us. So after our flesh dies, our soul either goes to heaven or, I'm sorry to say it, but it's a real place, or where? Hell. Hell. All right? And who lives in hell? Or who's going to live in hell? The devil. So your heart belongs to the devil prior to Jesus Christ. After Jesus Christ throws that catalytic transformation in your life, your soul now belongs to who? God. To who? God. It belongs to God. It's no longer the devil's. It's yours. So it's, it's God. So let me ask you this. And this will be a debate. You can talk to me afterwards. If God is more powerful than the devil. Got that? Who agrees with me that the devil is stronger than, than, than God? Good. Nobody raise your hand because I twisted it up a little bit. Good. All right? Because God is so much more powerful than who? The devil. So if you and I belong, our soul belongs to God, can he steal it away from God? No. The answer is no. There is a debate within Christian world if you can lose your salvation. I'm here to say this is where Catalyst Church believes. I believe that once you are truly saved, truly Truly, you truly love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Truly, and not just religiously, you cannot lose your salvation. Because your soul now belongs to who? God. But I'll say this. There are many of you and others that play the religious card and not the Jesus card. The religious card that says, you know, I'll do this, this, and this for God. And I love God. But you don't have a relationship with Him. Your soul belongs to the devil. And can you lose it? Yes. Because you never, God never, what? Had it. Had it. Check this verse out. My sheep, John 10, verse 27. My sheep, my sheep listen to my voice. My sheep, that's God. God saying, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hands. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And here's the thing. This is what Jesus is speaking. I and my Father are one. Ephesians 4 verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whom you have been, and this is huge, whom you have been, what? Sealed until the day of redemption. You have received the Holy Spirit and transformation has happened in your life. You have received the Holy Spirit of God in your life. And now your eternity is sealed forever. And who's going to claim it when you die? Jesus. God. He's like, oh, okay, Holy Spirit, take care of my sheep. By the way, sheep are the stupidest animals on the face of the planet. They smell and they're stupid. Raise your hand and compare it to God if you're stupid. All right? If you don't have your hands up, you're probably stupid because you are stupid in God's eyes. All right? Listen, I'm not here to offend you, but it's true. We are dumb compared to God. And sheep are too. So that's why we need to listen to the shepherd's voice and not our own. All right? Um, we are still until the day of redemption. Okay. 
I read Colossians 3, 1, it talks about your life is now, now hidden um, in Christ Jesus. Um, Romans talks about how we are not able to die, we cannot be separated from God. All right, all I have to say is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your what? Soul. Your soul belongs to God, so live as your soul belongs to God. So live that you're heading to eternity with God and no longer the devil. Make sense? All right. You can talk to me later about the debate. I don't care. That's where we stand. Okay. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Watch this. Hey, my name's Randy. My mind has been transformed because of Jesus. Before Jesus, um, I didn't have a sense of belonging. I didn't have a father figure. Uh, I chased that. I didn't have... Uh, I didn't have a place that I felt like that I was wanted and welcomed. Um, so I turned to everything else. I thought that the things in the streets were, um, they were interesting to me. They, they, caught my, they caught my attention because I didn't have anybody to uh, lead me or guide me somewhere else. I, I turned to the selling drugs and the uh, fighting and, and the alcohol. And, I thought because the guys that I was around were always showing me attention that that's where I belonged. And for many a years it got me in trouble. I spent a lot of time uh, away from my family, a lot of time uh, incarcerated. Um, I spent a lot of time just searching for who I thought I could be. Um, now that I have Jesus in my heart, and Jesus has changed my mind. I realized that that is my father. I realized that I do have a purpose. I realized that I can be somebody with the power of Jesus, with the strength of Jesus. Um, I, I think that um, in time that I could be a solid mentor for some of the other younger guys in the church. Uh, I think I can be a good friend to people now. I think that I can one day be a good husband. I think that one day I could be a good father figure, not just mom's boyfriend for China and Deja. And I think through all the uh, adversity, God had a plan. He wanted to change my mind, and when I opened up to him, he did. And uh, I think it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. His mind was transformed because of who? Jesus. Romans 12, verse 2, it says, when it's talking about the mind, do not be confused formed any longer to the patterns of this world. I don't know about you, but when I look at you and I look at my life, Jesus has not transformed my life as much as I want Him to because of selfishness. I want to be an American. I want to have this, this, I want to do this, this, and the world around me transforms who I am. For example, I have trendy short pants on, alright? Trendy, trendy. They've got a rip right here. They've got a rip right here. And I'm like, man, it's the coolest thing. But I had a, I had clothes before that fit fine and that, that looked okay, but because the world told me that I need to now have ripped pants, which doesn't make a bit of sense, ripped pants, shirts, and all this stuff so that I fit in, the world has transformed my mind. Now, it's, I'm not saying, oh, you can't be trendy. You be trendy, just don't read into that. I'm just saying the world can transform your mind into something it's not supposed to be. If the transformation that the world is doing in your life overpowers the transformation that Jesus is having in your life, again, are you a true Christ follower? Is the world overtaking you? Or is the power of God that lives inside of you transforming your life? Because it continues to say, Do not be conformed to any longer to the patterns of the world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing, the changing of your mind. Then, you'll be able to test and approve God's, God's will is good, pleasing, and His perfect will. Again, you will have the Holy what that comes into your life? Spirit. Holy Spirit that comes into your life. And at that time, your mind will be transformed. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect with your mind. Heaven forbid you're perfect. All right? 
But what I'm saying is you're working on that transformation. It is a process. It's a step that keeps going and going and going. But you have to let God take care of it. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The little G God, which who is the little G? With the verse that's saying little G God. Go throw that up there, Terry. The little G God, what does that mean? Satan, okay. When the Bible says little G God, that's talking about actually Satan. All right? The little G God of the age has what the mind of the believers. Uh, Terry, you have that up there? Put that up there, please. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. All right, here we go. The little G God of the ages has what the mind of the unbelievers? Okay, blinded. Have you ever talked to somebody about their relation, possible relationship with Christ? And you're, you make it so simple. You use you use illustrations, and you're, it's like so clear to you that all they have to do is just transform their mind and have a relationship with Christ. And you're like, don't you get it? How many of you guys are with me? You're like, they're just dumber than me. Are you with me? Yeah. We've talked to people. We're like, it's it just it's there. And it's frustrating to be a pastor because I preach it and you're like, huh? <laughs> because many of your minds have been what? Blinded. Blinded. Illustration. The, um, probably about a year ago now, the, in Chile, the, there were miners in the, in the mines. It collapsed and they had no way out. You remember that story? Yeah. Actually, they're trying to now sue the, the, the government. It's like stupid, but... Um, so they're down there for months, I think, just months down there, and, and their eyes just start to get adjusted to no light. I don't know how the body works, but for some reason, their eyes were not capable of seeing the light. They were blinded by everything that was going up on the surface of the land. They started to dig down and dig down and dig down. They went through drill bits and drill bits to try to get down to them. And that's how we are many times. We're drilling and drilling and months went on to drill down to these guys. And that's how we are sometimes. We're, we're kind of drilling down into the darkness of people's lives. It's not a, it, it is a marathon to reach people for Christ. It's not a sprint. You're not going to drill down and they're going to be, Jesus! No, it takes 7.6 times, research says, 7.6 times of hearing about Jesus until somebody comes to know Christ. Drill, drill, drill. And the story goes, they drilled down and all of a sudden there was light. And they, 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 they started to move the guys up. And if, if you saw the clip, they were moving the guys up. And what were the, the, the miners wearing when they came up? Sunglasses. Because... The light was so amazing. Their lives were transformed from darkness to light because they kept drilling down. Your mind will be transformed because God will change your mind. Just work at it, work at it, work at it. And your friends that you're working on, working on, working on, keep drilling and drilling and drilling because we're at war with the little G God of the ages. All right. And then the last one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your what? Strength. All right? You with me so far with everything? This one's going to hurt the most. All right, go watch this. My name is Cheyenne. Um, God has transformed my life through Jesus Christ. Before then, this is pretty much what I looked like. Um, I was told that... Um, I wasn't worthy, so that's what I felt. I never had the strength to disagree, and that's what I felt. Um, my abuse was not only physical, but it was verbal. So, you know, that constant someone telling you those things, it kind of just makes you weak, and you don't have the strength to do anything more. And that's pretty much who I was. Now that God has transformed my life, this isn't me today. Today, God has given me strength through my new family, my boyfriend who loves me so much, would never do this to me. Through prayer, through reading the Bible, now I can be strong for my family, for my kids, and for those who have also been down this road. This is who I am today through God's strength, and you can be that way too. If you believe 
that he can do anything through Christ that strengthens us. You can be who I am today too. We think, we think that we are strong enough to do whatever we want to do. We think that we can get through life ourselves. And as Christ followers, that's not how it works. That's not. You rely on God's help to give you strength so that you can get through circumstances. Cheyenne and that Cheyenne said that story and other people of you. You're like, how am I supposed to get through this, God? But no, no, no. Oprah says, forget Oprah. She like, doesn't have a cable channel anymore. But forget Oprah. Forget all those books. It's God. Your strength is found in God's Word. You think we think it's all about us and the other books that we're reading. It's about our best friend that went through it that's not a believer. Yeah, they're going to give you advice and it's not good advice. Because the advice that you need is in here. The strength you need is in here. Because all you need is God. It's, it's frustrating, honestly, because I'm not a counselor, but I have people come into my office all the time. I get phone calls and they say, Dave, I need to talk. And I don't mind to talk. Please don't, don't misunderstand me. But they, you, others come into my office, make phone calls and you say, how am I going to get through this? Almost always, my first thing is, do you have a relationship with Christ? Good. Because it will never change if you don't have a relationship with Christ. The second thing is, talk to God about it. You're like, but they... No, what does the Bible say about it? What does the truth say about it? You're like, I don't know. Then don't come talk to me about it. Find it in here. And if you're like, where do I go? I will help you. But don't come to a feeble human being who is as weak as anybody else for answers. If the God of creation has the answers right here, get into his word. You're like, that's easy. No, oh, it's easy! <laughs> you hear my frustration? Read the book. I was going to call it stupid, but I'm not. Read the book. The answers are here. If you do not know where to turn, come to me. That I would love to talk to you about the Bible. And let the Bible and God transform your life so that your strength will no longer be in Dave or in church or in anybody else, but will be found in God and God alone. <laughs> Now again, if you talk, you can still come. Okay? But you cannot get through life on your own power. You can't, and you won't. You'll fail every time. But here's a cool thing. As soon as your life has truly been transformed, your strength is there for the taking. You are now a child of the living true, most powerful God, the only God, the entire universe. The one who hung the stars, the one who made all the atoms and all the weird stuff that's in us. He is there and it's by His strength and His strength alone. So I want to challenge you where you got to work. I want to challenge you to find a time how about this? I want to challenge you to be so focused during this series on God and let these values that we have and the Bible transform your life. Because I love you guys very much. And it's frustrating to see you guys struggling. And all you have to do is put your strength in hand. You're like, Dave, you don't even know how low that I am. Well, even better to come to him. The Bible says, come to me, all you are who are weary and burdened, and I will give you strength. How many of you guys can honestly say, I'm just, I'm just beat down. I'm just, I'm just almost at the low of my lows. All you who are weary and burdened, he will give you strength. And if you are going through things great, wait for the testing. It will come. And God is, is, is kind of like a, 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 he's interesting. He really is. I'll put in the, um, I need to close up, but I'll put in the, the mindset of my child. Spiritually speaking, 
I am as a I have a relation with Christ. I have a relation with Christ because now I am God's child. Okay, I'm God's child, so I've got Big Daddy of the universe protecting me. Got that? My son Ethan or my daughter comes in, and if they need help, I'm going to help them. But if they come to me and said, "Daddy, um, I, I need I need some milk," my, my say my my daughter comes in, she's six. She's like, I need some milk in my sippy cup or my, my, my thing. And I, a loving father would get his butt off the TV, or off the couch watching TV, and I would go help my daughter, correct? But in the back of my mind, I want to test my child. I want to teach my child on how to do things themselves. So as a loving father and a lazy father, I would say... <laughs> Let me just this time get up and I will show you where the milk is, where the cup is, and I will teach you on how to pour it. So in the next time, you have learned your lesson on how to do it because the Father taught on how to do it. Spiritually speaking, you and I are going to be tested by our loving Heavenly Father to say, are you going to put your trust and your strength in the world or on our heavenly Father. Do me a favor, bow your head.